So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about this particular four terabyte SSD that I've got here, which is the Orico 07000, which at this distance, you're not going to be able to see anything about it. So what I'm going to do is just do a quick close up of what comes in the box here. So basically this SSD comes with like thermal pads, also like a heatsink solution, a screwdriver, M.2 screw and stuff like that. So whilst I wouldn't personally use those things myself because because I'm going to be putting this SSD into enclosures and docks and stuff. All the bits that come with it are actually really good. If either you've got a desktop system or indeed you might have a laptop where, where you can actually replace like, you know, the SSD or add an SSD to it as far as like, you know, NVMEs are concerned or M.2s. So yeah, all that stuff that comes in the package is good for it. Anyway, let me just put this stuff on the table because it's going to get super annoying just holding that all the way through the video. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this video is because I've been super impressed with this SSD so let me just wrap it on about a few things here because this might just be the perfect SSD for somebody else out there because of its price now so far this is the cheapest four terabyte NVMe SSD that I've managed to come across and it costs 189 pound here in the UK on amazon.co.uk which basically makes it either the cheapest or one of the cheapest four terabytes now this is a gen 4 nvme uh, so it's not even like gen 3 hence why i don't understand why the price of it is so low in the first place now i've got to be dead clear about something here it was sent to me by orico to do reviews with and stuff like that i've already done one video with it but it will be getting used in a bunch of other videos to do with other enclosures and i'll run through these in a second and another the thing to be clear about is I personally would not pay £189 for a 4 terabyte SSD. I've just been bitten on the arse too much in the past buying cheap things. So I've got to be dead honest, I would not normally buy something that cheap. However, because it was given to me and I thought, okay, I'll give it a go and if it works, I'll do videos about it. I've actually been really, really surprised by its performance. It's ridiculous and I'll just touch upon a few of these things as I'm talking through this video. Now, what I've done so far is done one pair with it with this FIDCO enclosure and the read speed for doing real world disk speed testing was over I think 3600 megabytes per second it was like stupid fast in the real world disk speed testing now just on this particular enclosure as well while i think about it i've already had somebody respond to that video in the comments saying that they bought this very same enclosure and they've had problems with it all kinds of weirdness it's not working fast and all kinds of stupid stuff going wrong with it now i have already read uh, other people saying that they've had problems with this particular enclosure so just quickly if i see any more issues with this enclosure being reported within the comments section for that last video that i done using this enclosure uh, i'll pull the video down and then i'll make a video explaining why i've pulled it down but that's just a side issue to this video because somebody's already said that they bought one and they had problems with it that was not problems with the ssd being in mind because the ssd is absolutely fantastic anyway so i've got a number of other videos coming up two of which i've already half recorded and done the speed testing with now i can't remember which one it was now it might be the the quiz lab um, enclosure here that i've already done but there's one video where when you see the video what you'll notice is the ridiculous amount of slc cash that would appear to be on this uh, this ssd so what happens in the video I take, I think it's a 400 gig folder to do me real world disk speed testing. But what I do, I write the folder to the external uh, enclosure using the Orico SSD and then without like giving the drive time to settle and like refresh its SLC cache and stuff I rewrite another 400 uh, ter terabytes another 400 gigabytes I wish it was terabytes another 400 gigabytes of data to the actual SSD now for the first two passes of the 400 gigabytes um, it doesn't slow down 
it maintains its high speed right the way through. And it was only during the third pass of dumping another 400 gigabytes to the SSD that it eventually like slowed down and you know basically like ran out of its SLC cache and then went to its like low speed. Uh, so I'm gonna say it's somewhere in the region of a terabyte, which is what it's like its fast cache or SLC cache would appear to be. Now that is massively surprising because I've had like many four terabyte SSDs and even one of the best ones or supposedly best ones that you can get actually say supposedly the the 990 Pro by Samsung is definitely a really good SSD as long as it's being cooled properly and it's got the correct firmware on as well because that driver is notorious uh, for having dodgy firmware and basically it aged the drive far too quickly uh, as far as like terabytes written were concerned so a load of problems with that particular SSD but even with the correct uh, firmware it still does run really hot anyways Dave shut up so the thing is this particular Orico here has got way more SLC cache than what the 990 Pro has at four terabytes. So although it can't beat the 990 Pro anywhere near it as far as like long-term speed is concerned, definitely has got way more SLC cache on it. Now, another thing as well, I've used this SSD in a couple of the examples where I've had to deliberately only use 300 gigabyte folders for the data transfer. And, and the reason for that is because, again, this Orico has got more SLC fast cache than what the internal one terabyte has got on my MacBook. So it was basically outperforming the internal one terabyte on the MacBook as far as SLC cache is concerned. Now we can't outperform it as far as speed is concerned, but the SLC cache is ridiculous on it. Like I say, it must be somewhere in the region of about a terabyte, something like that. Now, once the SLC cache has been depleted, these, uh, the speed will plummet. It will drop right down to somewhere around 150 megabytes per second, which is terrible. However, a lot of like budget or low-end SSDs, that's exactly what they do. Once they're starting to hit their proper long-term storage NAND, that's when you'll start seeing ridiculously low speeds, especially the likes of like, you know, what is it, like QVO and stuff like that, you know, the Samsung things and what have you. They're even worse. Anyway, uh, what I'm pointing out though is that, so it's not all roses. It's not like it'll do like its fastest speed forever and ever. It won't. It will drop. However, if you then give the SSD a bit of time for it to refresh its SLC cache, it will go back to the fast speeds. But of course, the more you fill up the SSD, and this happens with every other SSD as well, the more you fill it up, it will then also, the SLC will run out a lot quicker and stuff like that. So the more more it gets filled up essentially the slower the ssd becomes because the slc burns through really quickly and is nowhere near what it was to start off with when the drive was blank um, and then also that the bait the but basically the knock-on effect of that is is that the drive basically becomes slower because it starts right into its long-term and uh, a lot quicker once the drive starts filling up more now that particular issue happens with every single SSD out there, although an expensive SSD such as, say, a Western Digital SN850X or indeed a 990 Pro by Samsung, what you're going to find with those SSDs is when they run out of their SLC cache, they're basically going to be right into their long-term NAND at somewhere in the region of 1.5 gigabytes per second, and that is what you're paying for when you buy a more expensive SSD. Although saying that, there are also some fairly pricey four terabyte uh, SSDs out there which will also plummet really low once they run out of their SLC cache anyway so I've got coming up uh, over the next like month or whatever next few weeks a bunch of different videos where I'll be using this on it like I said there's already been one video which is with the Fideco and um, now there's probably at the time of this video going up there might be another video that's already gone up and that's using uh, the SSD with this Quizlab docking system here as well for the M4 Mac Mini. So that's a really good test, that one, because I'm actually using it as a dedicated video media drive for my uh, video editing setup within Resolve, and it is absolutely fantastic. So 
defo keep an eye out for that video although it might order to be up by the time this video goes up but that's really good check that one out because it's more about video editing as opposed to just disk speed testing and stuff like that now i've also got to be going to be putting it in the quiz lab i can't remember what the model number is but it's this quiz lab enclosure i'll be putting it into that i've already half done that video then also there's this pow top here which is only a 10 gigabits per second base or dock system for the m4 uh, mac mini so I'll, I'll throw the ssd with inside that as well and i believe that's probably i think on the table that i can think of that i'm going to be using it in there might be something else that i've been sent as well that i can throw it in but the bottom line here is um it's £189 for four terabytes and I've been absolutely blown away by it and it is definitely something that I think people out there should consider if they're looking for a budget build or if they just don't need to be moving massive amounts of data constantly all the time as I normally would. Now to be dead honest it really isn't something that I personally would use myself but the reason for that is is because I use a case as TB501s and stuff which are 80 gigabits per second to Thunderbolt 5 compatible SSDs with like you know Western Digital SN850Xs in them those builds that I've got are at the moment the fastest like you know drive system if you're doing long data dumps don't forget the 990 Pro is actually faster than a than an SN850X over the short term but if you're doing very long data dumps the 990 Pro will go down to like 1.5 gigabytes per second uh, after it's gone through about 400 gig of like writing whereas the sn850x will continue at its full speed which is somewhere in the region of six gigabytes per second on a tb501 and it'll do that for around a terabyte so like i say right now the 501 with the uh, with the four terabytes uh, sn850x in is definitely uh, the fastest ssd for doing long data dumps so the point that i'm making out there anyway is they're what i use so i wouldn't personally be using these things on a regular basis however i would definitely recommend to people to either go and see if they can find other videos that, that are using this ssd or basically check out my videos in fact in this video i'll put a link to my uh, ssd build and test videos so there'll be the uh, the playlist for that within the video description to this video uh, so yeah check check that out and keep an eye on it and then just see the videos where they've used this ssd in it because i believe this is going to be really good for people out there who just don't have the budget to be building like you know the most expensive fastest ssds and stuff like that anyway just to round off this video and um, keep an eye on the channel because i'm hoping it won't be too long but i will be hopefully showing soon i don't know should i mention this yeah, uh, right, I'll be showing at some point soon a system which is going to be the first of its kind using Gen 5 SSDs for external storage on Mac. So keep an eye on the channel for that one. Anyway, sorry for all the rambling and stuff, but I just thought it was definitely worth talking about this SSD for those out there who might be interested in it. Anyway, I'm going to dive off. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up and all that stuff. I'm David Hardy. Thank you very much for watching the video. Take care and goodbye now.